Hey, hello guys. This is Karthik from ExecuteAutomation.com. This is part seven of our Coded UI video series. So in this part, we are going to talk about data-driven testing in Coded UI testing. So before starting this part, I would request to watch part five and six since this part is going to be the continuation of those parts. So data-driven testing is one of the most useful part in any automation testing tool. It can be any testing tool like Selenium, QTP, or Test Complete. We do data driven automation testing in it. So, data driven testing in coded UI testing is done especially to replace the hard coded values with external data sources. So, the external data sources can be either a Excel sheet, can be a CSV file, can be a database table, or it can be an XML file as well. We have already talked about data driven testing in my Selenium video series. If you had any opportunity to view that video, you can actually go back and view the data driven testing in Selenium in framework design and development playlist of this channel. Or you can also read the article of data driven testing with Selenium in Execute Automation website itself. So data driven testing is one of the most powerful and one of the most useful part in any automation testing tool as mentioned already. So with data driven testing we can do a lot of parameterization of values instead of just one single hard coded value. So let's not waste our time. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Okay, so this is the same project which we worked so far in part four and part five. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to use the data driven testing mechanism to perform or replace the hard coded value of the display text 115 to a value which is actually coming from the external data sources. Okay, so let me try to recollect this code. So what we're trying to do here is we are actually performing an add operation using the calculator by pressing the 89 plus 23 is equal to 112. So we're doing this operation right here and then we are doing an assert add here. So using assert add, what we're trying to do is uh, we are performing an assert operation of r dot equals of the text from this particular property. So if you go to this property, you can see it's 115, right? So we're just trying to do a r equals of the hard coded value in the code with the display text property of the UI element. So as you could recollect, there is a, there are different types of property for each and every element. So we're just verifying the display text property of this particular element. And then we are verifying whether the hard coded value is equal to the display text. So instead of doing this way, we are going to parameterize the value, hard coded value with an external data source value. So uh, let's first create a external data source. So in order for that to be done, I'm going to right click the project right here and I'm going to add a new item. So the new item I'm going to work with is a CSV file. So there is no separate file type called CSV. So there is one more type called file. So you can see here there's a text file. So instead of text file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this to data.csv. All right. And then I'm going to hit add. So this will create a CSV file for me right here, as you can see here. Right. So I'm going to create two columns here in the CSV. So one column is just for our understanding purpose. And the other column is the actual value which we're going to verify. So the one column is, let me name it as scenario, and the other column is result. So the scenario here is 89 plus 23, I'm performing, and my result should be 112. So this is my scenario, and this is the result which I'm expecting. So if I do 89 plus 23, then I expect 112 as the result. All right, so I'm going to save this. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to verify okay for this particular scenario am I getting this result or not right 
So let's flip back to CoreDUI test1.cs. So if you see here, the assert operation is doing a hard-coded comparison operation. So rather doing that way, I'm going to create a new attribute called data source. So there is a attribute called data source. So within data source, if you could see here, there are different types of parameters that you can pass. So you can pass a data source setting name. So this setting name can be from the name of the data source found in Microsoft Visual Studio dot quality tools of the app dot config file or you can use a data source from the connection string and the table name. So this can be a SQL database connection string and the name of the table or you can use the provider invariant connection string table name and data access method. So this is the actual one which is provided from SQL client. But we're not going to use all those things. Rather, I have actually written this data source for a CSV file. So I'm just going to copy paste this for time being. All right. So, so note that I have removed the test method right here. I just, I'm just using the data source here. So the attribute test method is actually available within this particular attribute itself. All right. So what it actually takes. So here the data source is microsoft.visualstudio.testingtool.datasource.csv So it's a CSV file and the data directory is actually my local directory. So I'm just passing it as double slash data.csv and there is a hash which indicates a dot so there's a special character right here and then the data access method is sequential so there are two kinds of data access method one is sequential or one is random so I'm going to use the sequential. So actually you can see it right here. There's the sequential and one more is random. So I'm going to use the sequential way. All right. And then the deployment item is data.csv. So every time you run this test, this data.csv will be deployed to a bin directory of this particular project. So this is very useful while you try to run this test in a remote machine. Again, this is a new concept. There are new concepts called test controllers and test agent settings where every time you run a test from your test controller which is the one machine which executes the test from one place and there are test agents which will be running in a different machine so every time you run the test the test controller will deploy the code into the test agents machine and the test agent will execute the test. So that's completely a new topic altogether. So we are not going to discuss this as of now. So we'll be discussing about that in later part of this videos of the video series. But as of now, just remember this de deployment item is something which will deploy the data.csv file into your bin directory, right? So as you can see here, there's a test method at attribute as well. So we'll just pass it right here, right? So right now we have just created the data source for this particular method. That's great. But where am I pulling this column name result into my, how am I going to use the uh, CSV file data or CSV column data into this particular assert add? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this method a little bit. So I'm going to add a string of course, any change you make in the uimap.design.cs file is going to change automatically. So just for demonstration purpose, I'm changing it, but this is a complete bad practice. So don't try to do that, all right? So string expected data, all right? And this expected data is what I'm gonna verify with this or equals. So I'm gonna just paste it. So I'm, gonna, I'm just replacing the hard-coded value with external data source value great and then the next thing is how am i going to just close this thing so how am i going to pass this value right here so for doing that there is one more property as you can see here actually this test contest provides some of the functionalities which is very much related to your test method. So what are the functionalities does this test contest provide for us? So let's see if I'm trying to access this property test contest dot if I put that 
you can see there are a lot of methods and properties which are available within this test contest so you can see there is something called data row so I'm going to use this data row of so it asks me the column index so right now the column index is nothing but the results so this is the column index so I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste it right here all right and I'm going to convert it to string great so this is going to be the data which is actually coming from the external data source the CSV file and this data is going to be fetched and this is going to be populated into the test contest so the test contest has got a data row property which actually has the index where we can pass the column name directly and I'm just trying to fetch the data out from this and if you want you can also print oops sorry it's a kind of Java thing console dot right line of test contest dot data row of uh, let's say I'm gonna print the scenario before I start the execution so the scenario part two string All right so I'm just gonna copy this or cut this and paste it right here and then I'm gonna just decorate this a little bit executing this scenario all right great so now if I execute this particular test let's see if I could able to run this test or not so right now as you can see here I'm just opening the calculator every time actually from part 3 4 and 5 every time I try to open this calculator manually and then I start this test so why don't I try to open this calculator before each and every test so in order for that to be done I'm going to call one more attribute which is nothing but test initialize so I'm going to call this attribute and I'm going to set this to a public void initialize method and then I'm going to call something called as application under test so there is a class which actually has a launch method so within the launch we can actually pass the calculators actual exe file path so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the system 32 I'm sorry maybe system 32 alright and I know there is a calculator sitting right here so I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it right here so let's pass the here string to make this directory accessible alright great so I'm just trying to launch the application under test right from here and this initialization will actually open the calculator for me and then it runs the test for me alright so why don't we just try it out so for running this test as we know we can run it either right clicking the test by run test or we can run the test using test window test explorer so I'm gonna just build this as of now because we have changed the code a little bit and then I'm gonna right click this and I'm gonna hit run selected test so this should open me the calculator and then it should run the test and it also should get pass that's very important oh no what does it say the unit test data adapter failed to connect the data source or read the uh, data for more information. I think we did some problem here. The data.csv is not accessible. There is a one more property to the a file, which is nothing but copy to output directory. So every time you execute this test, you should copy this to the output directory. If you don't do that, surely it's going to get a, create a problem. So what I'm going to do is. Uh, this property I'm going to change so instead of do not copy I'm going to change this to copy if it is newer so every time you just copy the file to my bin directory alright so I'm going to save this and why don't I try the execution right now so right now if I run this test then it should execute the test as expected alright it opened the calculator oops scenario does not belong to the table so what is the problem with the scenarios going on so 
let me try to debug this and I just want to show you or uncover you some of the bugs that we most of the time encounter while working with the CSV file. So I just want to create this a scenario kind of stuff to you to show you the real problem that you will face while using this kind of stuff. So I'm just going to hit a breakpoint right here and then if I just try to debug this, so there is an option called debug selector test. So if you try to debug the selector test, so now it should open the calculator for us. So the executor engine will hit this breakpoint. And now if you could see, let's go to the test contest and there is a data row. So why don't we just see the table? All right, can you just note what's going on here? So if you could see here, the before a scenario, there are some special characters appended. I really don't know how this thing comes. Honestly, I really don't know how this thing comes. So it's something to mess up with the the file type or the CSV file is doing some kind of stuff there. So surely as of now, I really don't know what this thing is. I think it's kind of bugged or there should be some kind of formatting issue which is happening with the CSV file. So I'm just going to leave it as it is as of now. So because of this error, we're getting this problem. All right, so instead, I'm just going to comment this code as of now, which is not very important for us. This is just a fancy thing. So all we are trying to do is whether the result is really getting the data or not. So that's what is the intention. So I'm going to test explorer once again. And now if I run the test, you can see that it's performing the operation and the test really got passed. Do you see that? It's working fine. Since the data, that we have passed here in the CSV file is 112 and the results of the application is also 112 so it's working fine. So right now why don't we just try to change the CSV file value from 112 to 115 as we did in the last video of this video series. So now if I try to run the selected test it should fail. So alright see you can see that the test got failed and there is an output here so say it's saying the expected value is 115 but the actual value is 112 in the UI all right so if we go to the output and if you see the the image it will show you there is an error all right great so this is one way to retrieve the data from an CSV file and populate into your code so there are different types of data sources available not just CSV file, there are some other data sources like Excel sheets, database tables, XML files. So just try it out yourself of, on all these different data types, data sources which you really use, which will be very helpful for you. Okay guys, so that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.